The Kenyan marathon runner has made history, becoming the first athlete to run a marathon in just under two hours. That is my passion. We have many athletes who have put Kenya on the map in the marathon. Running in, in Kenya is a culture. We have uh, most of the greatest runners of all times. A world record here in London at the Olympic Games. The first woman from her nation to take the 5,000 metre title. Ali and Kipchoge of Kenya, you are witnessing history. Kenyan athletes have taken gold in this race at the past eight Olympic Games. It's Kenya 1, it's Kenya 2, it's Kenya 5. With Cher Mokedi in her five-girl debut, her 26.2 debut with the champion. Even to this day, when I tell people what we do, their reaction is, in Kenya? Like a Kenyan company is doing this? And your biggest market is the US? <laughs> yeah, even Kenyans can't really be doing this. Enda is a company in Kenya that works with Kenyan athletes to make running shoes for runners around the world. And we gave the company the name Enda because it's a word you hear a lot when people are cheering their teams. Enda means go in Swahili. It's a fact that Kenya runners are the best in the globe. Just connecting that to the fact that our shoes are built based on their feedback. The tagline for Enda is Run Kenyan, right? And I've always found it fascinating that a guy from the middle of a village can come out and become a world champion. To run Kenyan is not just the physical act of running, it is the perseverance. You do what you need to do, even if you don't want to do it. I grew up around runners, and then I also come from a place uh, near Eldoret, which is also known as the city of champions. So a lot of runners come at, from that place. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to the London School of Economics. When I got to experience Wimbledon, uh, it blew me away, the amount of wealth around it, whether it's in the prize money, the organization around the sports. Why are there no Africans or no Kenyans playing this sport? You know, what's the systematic issue that's making uh, people not access tennis? So I decided to set up a tennis academy. The idea was to start with five-year-olds and four-year-olds, get good coaches, like just to kind of like get them in that system. The challenge with the tennis academy was one, the time needed for it. You know, it was a startup and I was working in a different country, so it was difficult. It was also vision. Um, I had gotten people to work on the company, but I did not, they did not understand Wimbledon because they'd never even gone to like the nearest town. And I think that led to the, to the project not being successful. I, I didn't feel too good about it. I really need to figure out how to make something work. Like, you know, it can't have been in vain. There has to be something. And so I decided to join a business accelerator program. And the reason for joining that accelerator was just to say, hey guys, I did this project, it failed, help me out. I know I want to create a business that has impact. I know that I want to create opportunities for people. What do I do? So I went in with a tennis academy and I went, I came out with a running shoe company. You know, there's so many athletes, they're marketing shoes for different companies. They have the knowledge. They are the people who are trying to make ends meet and support like entire communities. Why not work with them to create a Kenyan running shoe? At the same time, it was also this, the time I got a job to the UN in New York. Like it was like the pinnacle of my career in terms of where I wanted to go. But then I also remember having this feeling of, but where do you go after this? And I think at that particular point, coincidentally, Enda, which had started as a side project, started also becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And so from a personal perspective, I ended up spending more time at work, a little bit at Enda, and then Enda kind of just grew and I'm like doing so. It reached a point where I felt like I, I could not do both. And so at that particular point, I was like, okay, I have to make a choice. What do I want to do? It was one of those more pivotal moments in life where I feel like I was like, okay, I have to make this big, big change. I talked to my mentors and I always remember one of them telling me it's golden handcuffs because it was like okay look here they're paying for your kids education they're paying for your upkeep they're paying for you know your nice big salary yes you have all the creature comforts but no you can't leave that situation and so it's like it's still handcuffs even if it's golden handcuffs. The, the thing about growth is that what got you there is not what's gonna take you to the next level. I always equate it to like, like a snake shedding its skin. Nature doesn't give it an option to stay. <laughs> when growth comes, growth 
forces you to grow like you don't have an option to be like i'm not gonna grow into it and so this is how i felt like our skin was not it was not fitting us anymore we kind of needed to wriggle out of it check it out and kind of like grow into something new one of the things that really gave me great comfort at that time and still gave me gives me comfort to that was i was thinking about the the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land. And at that particular point, uh, they were like, oh, you know, we want something to eat and stuff like that. And then God gave them manna. And then he was like, but you can't keep it overnight. And I was like, why? You know, like, <laughs> uh, you have to kind of like, whatever it is that's left kind of like thrown away. And at that particular point, that's what I felt like. I felt like God was giving me what was just sufficient to be and I was like but I need more and he was like no my grace is sufficient like you kind of have to trust in it and the lesson of that was that you don't need to know about tomorrow I gave it to you so if I have you or you have me you're gonna have it tomorrow like expand your thinking a little bit. Kenyan startup Enda has become the first footwear brand focused on high performance on the continent. The Ender team was determined the manufacturing process would benefit Kenyans. The shoes are built here, just outside of Mombasa, where Ender employs 42 workers. I produce 250 pairs in a day. The shoes is light, very light, very comfortable. The brand has really started to make a name for itself. Last year, Ender sold more than 7,000 pairs of trainers. There are days where things go the way you want them to go, and then there are weeks where they don't go the way you want them to go. And what comes out of it is team spirit, um, Harambe, where we all come together and try to figure it out or and celebrate when things work, when things don't work, we just come together. What we're doing is bigger than ourselves. So even if we have a week that's not great, you kind of keep your eye on the Northern Star. Like what's, what is it that we're trying to achieve? We're showing the world that Africa can do what everyone else is doing. We're not development aid, we're not continent to be feared, we're a continent you can do business with at the same level as someone in Germany, in, in US, and so bad days. I remember the goal that's bigger than, than just myself. Our faith plays a big role in this growth stage. I think one of the things, as I said, like I have had to, I have been forced to build my faith because there's nothing else, you know? <laughs> and I feel like it's a pruning season and I feel like nature has shown me that we know what's coming. So it's fine to kind of like go through this. At the bottom of the shoe, you see Harambe which is pulling together. So as runners, for example, we are at our best when we are lifting each other up. The idea of incorporating different elements of the Kenyan uh, you know, culture and story in our design is to just preserve our history to the current generation who might be you know, too engaged with the, you know, the rush of current information age uh, to not have time to you know, reflect and think about where we've come from. So it's just a preservation of the country's history, but telling it in a more creative and relatable way to the current generation. Tell me to read a book about history, I'm like, well, but put that history in something I can see that I like, like a shoe, there's some element of interest it creates. There is also an element of national pride to work for a Kenyan company that is bringing our running heritage and creating a visual representation of it that doesn't exist anywhere else. I hope Enda brings to Kenya the visibility of what sports can do from a monetary and wealth creation perspective so that we can take it more seriously. I also hope that we create a lot, a lot, a lot of jobs directly or indirectly. I also hope we can be able to support community projects. That's something that's very dear to me. And I also want Enda to be like a symbol of hope, you know, that you don't have to, because here we have this whole belief that you need to be connected or you need to, you know, to kind of like find good opportunities, you need to have like someone to kind of like hold your hand. And I'm like, I never had that and I did it. So for me, it's also that symbol of hope that, you know, any person can be whatever they want to be, but you kind of just have to persevere. Like the journey is the important thing, but it is not a, success is not a preserve of just some people. It is everybody's, um, Anybody can reach it.